Recorded live. Hello, everyone. Terry Lynn here. I'm waiting for Frank to come on board with us. So we'll just uh, be quiet here till we get more folks on board and I see Frank come on. Hi, Terry. Frank, hi. Is that you? That's me. All right. There you go. Well, we're we're right on time. Uh, we've got everybody uh, got everything ready to roll here. So, um, are you ready? And I can go ahead and do an introduction. Yeah, please. Okay, great. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight on University Ucadia um, Info Call. And uh, welcome, everyone. Join us and get more information on university.ucadia.info on the web. I'm going to turn the call over tonight. We've got some new information to cover tonight, as well as going back and covering a little bit more detail on foreclosures. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Frank O'Collins from Australia here with us from Ucadia. Thanks, Frank, for joining us, and take it away. Yeah, thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, look, welcome everybody who, who are on the call at the moment and welcome to those that will be listening to the call later. I hope as these calls are happening each week that those that are listening tonight and those that will listen later find that they're useful and find that the information that we share and the questions that are asked and hopefully answered are helping you in your own issues and the issues of friends and family. So as Terry just outlined, there is some, I think, very exciting and, and important information that I would like to share with you tonight. But before I do that, just to let everyone know who are on the call now and will come on later, we have a standard format where I will cover in the first hour this new information and explain some of the background to it. And then in the second hour, or a bit over the second hour, I open up and ask for your questions and hopefully answer those questions. When we do get to that section, uh, what I do ask uh, each time, and I, I'm, I'm really grateful uh, that, that all of you who have been on have been able to, to agree to this, that you uh, try and limit, if you want to make a statement, please try and limit it to as short as you can and then get straight to your question. Because if you have got something you want to share as information, uh, you're always welcome and the forums on university.ucadia.info are for that precise format. So in the question and answers, it really is strictly for questions and answers. So if you do have something that you want to make as a statement, uh, please, but keep it really short and get straight to the question. Or if you feel that you want a, a longer forum, please, by all means, go to university.ucadia.info and, and share that with others. Okay, with that in, that, without uh, too much more ado, the issues that we want to talk about tonight, <clears throat> first I want to talk about is some of the updates in terms of the bigger picture. What's, what's happening in the world at the moment and what is the relevance to us, particularly in this battle between uh, the parasites, the battle between the forces, the powers that be, and uh, where are things tilting at the moment? It's a moving feast, but I'd like to share some of that with you. And, and in particular also, why are we doing what we're doing? with registrars if ultimately the registrars and people at a local level still don't seem to be getting the message. So I want to cover that first. And then I want to cover the EDP for use in court. And this is a promise I made to those who are on the call and those that have listened that we would have a specific ecclesiastical deed poll for going to court. And I'd like to share that with you tonight, go through that with you tonight and explain why it's designed the way it's done. I want to introduce something that I've talked about in the past, but something that is extremely important and historic, and is the concept of the promised land record, the promised land record, and what this means 
as proof of a right and proof of a promise fulfilled. And then I want to get on to Great Writs and give you some progress on how the Great Writs are going, uh, explain some of the delay, but I also want to introduce and share with you some of the important considerations that we are now pulling into the Great Writs about exactly how these writs are sealed and the historic significance of how these great writs will be sealed. So just to summarise, they're not a long list, but they are going to be <coughs> important list. Updates on the parasites and what's happening in the world at the moment, and just a, a reinforcement of why we're doing what we're doing in the bigger picture. To outline the latest EDP for court, to talk about the historic record, the promised land record, and to cover the updates on the Great Writs and the importance of how we're approaching the sealing of those Great Writs. So before I get into the first one, I'm just going to ask, because I'm going to refer to this page, I'm going to the site one-heaven.org. That's one-heaven.org. And I'm going to, when I get to that page, I'm going to open up uh, How to Succeed at Court from the home page. And then on the right-hand side, I'm going down to the link that says Respect and Honour, which is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th link from the right-hand side. <clears throat> and when it comes up, it says Behaving with Respect and Honour Before the Courts. So I just want you all, if you can, to look at that page, on heavenorg open up How to Succeed at Court, and click on the link Respect and and on some of the paragraphs in this as we talk about the bigger picture. The reason I'm talking about parasites to start with is that there is enormous upheaval in the Middle East, that we continue to see uh, fractions and uncertainty in what's going on in Europe in terms of the euro, what's happening with the banks, and this seeming um, in, intractability in Washington, America, and places like Canada and elsewhere where it seems that they just want to continue to roll on business as usual. So before we, we move on and talk about this article and talk about some of those things, let, let me just replay an important point about parasite. When I use the word parasite, I am referring to a mind illness, a mental illness. I'm not talking about a race of people. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm not talking about a subclass. I'm not using any of those things to cast any aspersion on anybody because it knows no bounds in terms of religion. It knows no bounds in terms of race or age. It is a mental illness. Now, if you want to detect the mental illness that is the parasite, you merely have to look at the traits. The traits of the parasite are to be totally and wholly obsessed in their own benefit and no one else's, to be totally obsessed in power and status, to describe things when challenged in terms of destroying everything rather than a peaceful handover, to have absolutely no empathy towards your neighbour and sometimes even your family, and to view life now as the only real meaning of anything. In other words, to show a distinct lack of forward planning. Now, that, they're just some of the traits. There are more traits <clears throat> involved with being a parasite, but they are some of the traits. And when you think of some of those traits, they're not unique to the leadership around Obama, President Obama. They're not unique, unique to the leadership in Israel. They are traits that we see in Mubarak in Egypt, refusing to step down. They're traits that we see in bankers, and judges and lawyers. They are traits especially that we see in many in the truth movement who would rather <clears throat> see people sent down a blind alley than admit that they didn't have all the knowledge they needed or in fact work together to harness the knowledge and share the knowledge. So the concept of mental illness knows no bounds. When we describe it, we are describing an illness. Now, having said that, we also refer a number of times, and, and it is something that we assert, that there are particular instruments that promote 
mental illness. And we will be talking about some of those traits a bit later on when we talk about promised land and a particular group who are excluded from that right because of their mental illness. So what's happening at the moment in the world, uh, I know will concern a number of people. Um, and it concerns me because by no means are we through the woods and there is um, certainly no um, certainty yet that people suffering severe mental illness within the ranks of the US military and other military establishments will not seek maximum disruption if they are called to account and to stop acting with complete insanity. So whilst the Middle East provides some hope that people will see finally some freedoms, the outcome of these events are by no means certain. But what is certain is that the powers that be are no longer united and that the relationships that have been in place for centuries no longer stand. And I specifically refer to the connection between the Venetian families, the Grand Council, the, the Khazars, the false Menashe, the Zionists, whatever you like to call them, and the Vatican and the Jesuits has been severed for its first time in history since the Venetians established the Holy See by funding it, structuring and planning it almost a thousand years ago. So there are truly historic events taking place. How these events unfold is uncertain. Now, I will add one more thing in because I know that this is a long-standing issue that people raise. When the deeds of divine dishonour were issued at the beginning of, in December of last year, but almost the beginning of this year, there was one group that was not placed immediately in dishonour. And that group was the Jesuits. And there was a reason why that group was not placed in immediate dishonour. It wasn't that that group uh, is uh, clean hands or that group has started to change. I see no indication whatsoever in absolute proof that the Jesuits yet have been willing to change or demonstrate complete change. I do not see that at all. However, they did show an indication of honour by replying to Eucadia and showing some interest in the model of Eucadia. But for all other groups, completely ignored. US military, completely ignored. Uh, a range of other groups, completely ignored. So the only reason that they remain in honour is because of that contact. Now, if this year proves that they have done nothing to reform because they are central to the slave system that we live under. They are the keepers of the roles. Make no mistake, the provincial generals are up to their eyeballs in controlling the system we're in. Then we will foreclose on them as we foreclose on all other groups. So please don't think that there is any kind of favoritism, but history must be conveyed properly. If the deeds conveying your rights back to communities, back to you, are to stand the test of time, it must be done lawfully. And this is why we do what we do. So I'm here for 10 more months, and in the next four weeks, by the time we have completed the help on saving your home, and we have perfected the great writs, the next focus and the main focus for the remaining months will be helping you stand up in your communities with the rights, with the deeds, with the trust, with all the tools you need, and it will then be up to each and every one of you and those that come to stand. So behaving with respect and honour before the court. So I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs here. When they've imprisoned you without warrant or reason, when they've seized and taken your property without opportunity for recourse, when they have taken your children or your home or terrorised your family or slandered your name without, within your community, then it seems inconceivable that one should turn the other cheek and demonstrate both respect and honour to men and women who have none. 